In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up a brand new bind and fly quad. In today's video, I'm gonna be covering it on the Chimera 7, but this works for any bind and fly quad that you get. First off, I'm gonna show you how to get everything activated, bound and paired. Then I'm gonna show you all the custom settings that I put on my drones, including how to set up your GPS, how to set up all your buttons and modes and everything, how to set up your beeper and all that good stuff. Without further ado, let's get into it. It is officially cold here in Colorado. It's the day after Thanksgiving and I'm actually headed off to Iceland tomorrow. And this quad in particular that I'm gonna be setting up is actually a rebuilt quad because I completely demolished this Chimera about six months ago and I finally had someone rebuild it for me so this thing is just starting from scratch. But when you first open up the box, you'll pretty much have the quad, some antennas, some straps to put the battery on it, propellers, and then some extra random parts. But to start off, you're just gonna to wanna to grab the quad. And honestly, I don't know if this is true or not, but I've always been told to put antennas on whenever you plug your quad in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just put these on. Then once that's good to go, you're ready to plug it into the computer. All the quads that I fly have the O3 air unit in it, but this is a similar process if you're using previous air units as well. And you notice on the drone, you're gonna have two ports to plug in. The first one is right here. Then if you swap to the other side of the drone, there is another one right there. So you're going to want to plug into this one in the back. This plugs in directly to the O3 air unit. And then right off the bat, already an issue that I see a lot of people have is just getting it to connect to the computer. I've always found that these GoPro cords that are basically just USB to USB-C, these ones will always plug the drone into the computer and get it to recognize. If you're trying to use USB-C to USB-C, sometimes that doesn't work. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. And what you're gonna wanna download to activate the O3 Air Unit is DJI Assistant to Consumer Drone Series. So once that's downloaded, just plug your drone in. Okay, and it should come up right here. And then if this is a brand new drone, you're just gonna have to log in and activate. And bind it to your DJI account. And you're basically just gonna wanna make sure that you're on the most current version and that's it. Cool, so now let's get all the components linked before we head into Betaflight. So grab your battery and plug your drone in now. And I got my trusty thumbtack. So the first thing you're gonna wanna bind are the goggles, then the remote controller. And you just wanna hit this bind button here. Once you hear that beeping noise, you know the goggles are connecting. Next up is to bind the drone itself. And the bind button for that is right on this Chimera logo here. So press that, boom, you should have heard a click and this is all good to go. Next up, we're going to bind the controller. I fly all of my drones with the DJI remote controller. A lot of people use Crossfire as well. Crossfire has a really similar process to set up. First up, you're gonna wanna turn off the goggles and then you're gonna wanna hit the bind button on the drone again, okay? And then take the controller and hold this button for a few seconds until it starts beeping. Cool, so now full green bars and it's linked. So now you're done linking everything. You're gonna wanna keep your drone plugged in, keep your controller on and then plug it back into the computer using the other USB-C port right there. And for this part, we're going to be using an application called Betaflight, which looks super, super complicated, I know, but it's actually really simple and we're only using a couple of these controls. Hey, what's happening guys? Danny from the future here. So I don't have a sponsor for today's video, but I did wanna just take a quick second to let you know that the LUT collection that I've been working on for the past couple months is almost ready. We're less than a week away. These are the LUTs that I use every single day to really just make my footage pop and kind of stand out. I've had quite a few people ask me about it recently. So if you are interested in being one of the first people to know when I finally do drop those, there's a link down in the description below to a wait list where you just have to put your email information in and I will email you the second that I do launch. On top of that, I'm gonna be giving a huge discount to everyone who does join the list. That's about it. So let's get back to the video. Let's plug the drone back in and then plug the battery in and again, Keep your controller on for this. If the drone doesn't automatically connect, you're gonna to wanna to hit this yellow connect button and then you can see the drone right there. So the first thing I am going to check is the receiver tab, just to make sure all the inputs do what I want them to on the drone itself. When using this DJI RC controller, I've never had any issue where the drone does different things that I want it to, but when I have used Crossfire in the past, it has done weird things. And how you do that is basically you just change these letters until it, the drone 
drone does what you want it to do. So for example, going up like this should be your throttle. So you can see that throttle value going up. If you do this and instead the yaw does that, you're just gonna wanna switch the R and the T in this little area right here until you get everything controlling how it should be. Next up, we're gonna go to modes. I'm gonna delete these modes just because they are already preset and so we can start from new. So the first range that you're gonna wanna add is the arm switch. I use this button right here, which is the aux four. And basically you just want it to be in a range where the little yellow dot is in that range. Boom, that's arm. So when the dot isn't there, that is disarmed. Arm, disarm. Cool, so that's all set up. Sometimes I use angle mode when I'm taking off and landing. So you hit add range again. And what I use for that is this button right here. And when I'm up, I want that to be an angle mode. And then when I'm down, I want it to be an acro mode when I'm normally flying. Betaflight automatically connects that I wanna use this button just because I'm pressing it. So I'm gonna put angle mode up at the top of the range. So boom, you can see that yellow dot is in there at the top of the range. And then it's in acro mode anywhere else other than up top. Not gonna worry about horizon. The other thing we're gonna add is fail safe. So basically fail safe is just certain instructions that you give your drone when it disconnects from the receiver. So you can either have the drone drop out of the sky or you can have it activate the GPS, which is what I do and I'll show you exactly how to set that up. And I want my fail safe to be this button right here. Boom. So again, little yellow dot, you just want it to be in the center when you press it. So it's in there, now it's out, in out, boom. GPS rescue, don't worry about that because we'll program it with the fail safe. Next up, we're gonna add the beeper. So I'm gonna hit add range and I use this button as my beeper, this C1 button. So boom, press that, it's aux five, in, out, in, out. So it'll start beeping if I ever lose it and need to find it. Pre-arm is basically just a secondary measure to prevent yourself from accidentally arming your drone. So I set it to this. So unless the button is up like that, my drone will not arm. So boom, if I want it to be up, I'm just gonna drag this range over to up and then it will not arm if any of the buttons are down there. Cool, so we're gonna hit save and move on. And you'll know your drone has a GPS because, well, you bought it and it would say GPS if it had one on it, but it's basically just this little tab at the back side of the drone. All right, so next up, we are going to turn on expert mode and we are going to go to the fail safe tab right here. As you can see right now, because I have already programmed this in the past, it's set to GPS rescue, but most of the time when you get a new quad, it's just set to drop. And you don't want that because you want GPS rescue to work. So you're gonna switch over this to GPS rescue. And honestly, I keep most of these settings the same. There's a lot of more detailed videos about how to set up GPS for different situations. Joshua Bardwell has a very, very thorough video on it. But for me, I just change a couple things. So this one is basically just the minimum distance to home that the fail safe works. And I like to set this to over 50 meters. So when I'm testing my failsafe, you have to fly further than 50 meters away in order to test it. Minimum satellites allowed, that is basically just the minimum satellites that the GPS needs to connect to in order to be able to function properly. This right here, this little section, I usually click this off and this little thing is called allow arming without fix. So if you turn this off, your quad will actually arm even if it doesn't have the minimum required satellites. And the reason that I turn this off is just because I have the number of satellites in my OSD screen so I can tell how many satellites I have. And I just make sure that I have more than eight just because if you have less than eight, the GPS won't be that accurate. However, sometimes I'll be flying in a canyon or something where I literally can't get eight satellites. And if this is clicked on, then your drone won't allow you to arm unless you have eight. So turn that off and just kind of make sure that you have at least eight. Cool, save and reboot. The drone will start up again. And then the last thing you're gonna wanna set up is the OSD, which is basically just the screen that you see while you're flying the drone. And mine is pretty simple. Because mine has a GPS, I have the altitude. So you can see right here, that's basically just how high the drone is from where it took off. And then I also have, if you come down here, GPS latitude and longitude in the corner. Just in case I lose the drone and really can't find it, I can play this video back and I have the exact longitude, the exact latitude, and it can help recovering a lost drone. 
one. Next up is I have GPS satellites like I talked about before. I just look in the corner and, and just make sure I have at least eight satellites. Next up is home direction. This is just helpful when you're flying in places where you kind of can get lost in a forest, over the water, something like that. This arrow will just always point you towards where your home point is and I think it's super helpful. Then lastly is home distance. Home distance is super, super important because this lets me know how far away from home I am. With these drones, I know exactly how far I can go before it starts to lose signal and stuff. I just make sure to always be checking how far away from home I am to make sure I'm not over that range or past the range. Other than that, I don't have that much stuff. I know a lot of FPV pilots have a million things in their OSD, but I don't. Because I'm flying O3, I also have the voltage already in the DJI goggles, so I just go off of that voltage instead of having individual cell voltages on here. So I'm just gonna hit save, and then after that, we should be good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna test it indoors. I usually should not definitely test indoors, but it's freezing cold and snowing outside. So I'm just gonna hover a little bit, make sure everything works. But for you, if you are testing this, definitely go out in a field, and then I have one more specific instruction in order to test the GPS that you definitely need to do if you did set up your GPS. Okay, so here's my incredibly sketchy indoor testing ground. <laughs> the first thing you're gonna wanna do is put your props on. But you're gonna have four different props, obviously, and you need to make sure that these are on the correct directions. And always the front right propeller is angled in towards the drone. With the front left propeller, it should be angled this way. For the opposite corner, that should be the exact same angle pitched this way. So I'm gonna add this one here, and then the other two propellers, which if I line them up here, you can see it's pitched that way, should go on the opposite corners. Right there, and then right here and then you're just gonna wanna tighten them. I use this little prop tightening tool, which I will link down below. Once the props are on, I'm going to add a GoPro sticky to the front because that's actually how I mount my GoPros to my drones. A lot of drones will come with a 3D printed mount, but right away, whenever I get them, I take that off and switch to the GoPro sticky just because it's so easy to swap on and off. Most of my friends who fly FPV use the 3D printed mounts, but I just really like how easy it is to take on and take off. So I'm gonna put that there for whenever I wanna mount my GoPro on top. And if you guys are interested in GoPro settings for FPV, I have another video, which I'll link to above but for now we're just testing this drone. All right, all the props are good. Next, we're just gonna grab the battery straps that came with the drone. Okay, so we're just gonna wanna slide these through. There we go. Now we can mount the battery on top through the battery, put it on, strap it down. Finally, plug the drone in. At this point, grab a controller. Right off the bat, you can tell the beeper is activated and then Connect your goggles. You will ideally be doing this in a field, so you're gonna wanna put your goggles on so you can actually fly it. For me, I'm just gonna hover it in the air, make sure everything works. All right, so because I'm just testing this, I'm not gonna fly in acro mode. I'm just gonna fly in angle mode, and I'm just gonna hit the arm button. All right, so we're good to go. So, like I talked about, I'm gonna put my pre-arm up. So that means the drone is ready to fly. Then I'm gonna hit arm. Boom. We are in acro mode now. Just gonna put in angle mode. Ensure everything works and then we're good to go. If you did set up a GPS, there's one more step that you need to complete and that is just to test the failsafe slash GPS. And how you do that is basically just take your drone, fly over 50 meters away from yourself so it is in the range that it can activate, and then hover super close above the ground just in case the GPS does not activate and instead the drone drops. You don't want it to be falling from a high height or anything. So fly 50 meters away from yourself, make sure there's no obstacles in between for the GPS to hit, and then you're gonna wanna just hit your failsafe button, which is the top left button. If you did everything right, the drone should just activate the GPS and start flying flying back to you. When that happens, you know it worked, so you can just press that button one more time and you're good to go. And guys, that is pretty much it for setting up new quads. It's honestly a super simple process. It seems really complicated from the outside, but that is pretty much it. Like I said, if you're interested in the exact GoPro settings that I use when I'm flying, I have another video for that, but that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. If this video was helpful for you guys, make sure you drop a like or a comment. Those things seriously mean the world to me. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.